Hi, my name is Austin Dorman, and I'm a certified funnel builder and ClickFunnels ambassador. And today we're going to talk about workflows and creating a workflow inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. And before we begin, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And also check the description section as well for some really cool and awesome resources. And so the first thing that I want to do is just talk about uh, workflows. What is a workflow? So a workflow is essentially like the backend automation. Um, for your funnel. So let's say, for example, that you have a two page lead squeeze funnel, you have someone opt in, then you have a workflow that maybe sends an email sequence, for example. So that's kind of the idea of workflows. It's basically um, something triggers the workflow, and then there's a sequence of actions that happen uh, within the workflow. So we're going to actually build one out just to help you build either your first workflow or get a refresher of workflows. So with this funnel, this is a simple lead squeeze funnel. So we have two pages, the squeeze page and then the thank you page. And this is just in my demo account. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here on the left-hand side and we're gonna click on this little lightning bolt. So we're gonna add a new workflow. So we're gonna click new workflow and then we're gonna name the workflow and we're gonna talk about event types as well. So we're, we'll just call this test workflow. Now with event types, we have to select one. Basically, that's going to be what's going to trigger the workflow. So there's a few different options. You have appointments for appointments scheduled, calendar event for contact registered, opt-in, order, successful purchase, page view, subscription churn, subscription downgraded, and subscription upgraded. So depending on the funnel, what you're trying to achieve, you'll select one of these as the event type. So for this one, because it's a simple lead squeeze funnel, and the opt-in is the action. We're going to use opt-in as the event type. So we're going to click opt-in and then click create workflow. Okay, so a few things right here is the workflow is disabled. We can enable it by just toggling the button at the top right corner. So this one right here, this is going to enable the workflow. Because we're still building it, I'm just going to leave it disabled for right now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into was this workflow trigger. And then this just gives you a little bit of background about the workflow. So the event type is opt-in. The funnel is the lead squeeze funnel demo. So that's the name of the funnel. And then this is the name of the page of the funnel. Now this right here, anonymous contacts allowed. So we don't want anonymous contacts allowed. So we're actually going to edit it for right now. So we're going to click on this little pencil icon. We're going to unlock it and then we're going to disable this option and click save changes. And so we're going to close right here. And then the next thing is we have to create the sequence of what we want to do. So if we click on this plus icon right here, I'm going to move myself over here on the left hand side. We have a few different options of what we could do within the workflow. So um, if you have message hub, set up you could send message up messages you could also have this awaiting response which um yeah so this is just saying you have to get message hub set up you can send emails you can send digital assets to contacts you could pause the workflow basically hold them until you release them manually you have this until triggered so pause the contact workflow run until specified specific event is triggered you have conditional split path. So split your workflow into two paths based on set conditions. Split test, split your workflow into two paths based on percentage of traffic. Delay, hold customers for a set period of time. You also have this calendar event delay. Um, it says hold customer until a specified time in relation to the calendar event that triggered this workflow. And then trigger another workflow. Um, you could end it, so it basically just ends the workflow, and then conditional goal, pull a customer forward in their current path to this point if they meet these conditions. And then you have a few internal ones like tagging the contact, adding contact custom attributes. You get add any notes. You could notify your, either yourself or members of your team. You could create an affiliate, create or move an opportunity. In the pipeline stage, you can enroll people in courses, unenroll contacts, from courses, grant community access, and revoke community access. There's a few other items right here. This is third-party integration. So perform actions supported through external applications, and then webhooks, pass information from ClickFunnels to an external application. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a basic workflow. Basically, it's just gonna be, there's a trigger, 
we're going to tag the contact because that's best practice to tag in your contacts. Then I like to send a notification. Basically, I like to see who has opted in to my, either my funnel or who has purchased um, the stuff. And then afterwards, we'll do a, an email sequence. We're going to have an email. We're going to have a delay, an email and a delay. And then, um, and then we'll kind of go from there for right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the internal. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to tag the contact. And so there's a few options. You could either add tags or you can remove tags. So adding tags just adds a tag to the contact record. Remove tags removes it from the contact record. So we're going to go over here for contacts ta contact tags. I have two already, so these are already in my list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, this person is a funnel hacker, so I'm going to add that contact tag. Now, if we want to add new ones, so let's say, for example, we want to um, we want to tag the contact with the name of this funnel. So lead squeeze funnel demo. You could just type it here and then click enter, and then that creates the contact tag. And then we're going to click create step. Okay, so that's the first thing that I like to do, at least, is I like to um, create contact tags. Now, the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to use this notify. So like I mentioned, whenever I get notified, I like, or whenever I, um, when someone basically goes through my funnel and opt-in, I like to get notified for this. And this is really cool because you could, um, you could select the, well, first, you can select team members to get notified. So if you click into this, this will uh, give you a list to drop down. And then you have the message. Um, so with here, we could say, let's use these tags. So there's predefined tags. So we could say contact first name and then contact last name. And we could say opted in your funnel. And then the notification type, I usually do both email and notification. Notification just the, just notifies you through ClickFunnels and email gets it sent um, to your email. Okay, perfect. So we have my name as the member. We have the message, contact first name, contact last name, opted in your funnel. And the notification type is email and uh, notification. So we're going to click create step. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to click on this plus icon again, and we want to send our first email. So we're going to go up here under send and then send email. And then you could use either previous emails, click funnel templates, so forth. We're just going to click new template. We'll call this, um, call it maybe this one. Thank you. Thank you. And then we could just say, thank you for opting in. And then the from address, you'll just want to select it from your list. Make sure you have the email settings all set up and then make sure you have the reply to all set up as well. So we're going to click create. Then make sure you go in there and, and finish setting up your email. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on this plus icon one more time. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a delay. So we don't want these emails to go back to back to back. So we're going to use a delay. So if we go up here, delay, and then we're going to do one day, one day delay. We're going to click create. And then let's kind of do a high level walkthrough. So basically what's going to happen is it's going to tag the contacts, funnel hacker in the name of the funnel lead squeeze funnel demo. Then it's going to notify me. And then it, we're going to send out the first email and then it's going to wait a day. And then at this point, this is where you start doing your email sequence. So you would have email number two. We'll call this email number two. I won't we'll say email number two. And then we'll just use the from address. Like I mentioned, just make sure you get everything set up. And then, and then we'll do another delay. And then let's actually do one more. So we'll use the plus icon, send the email, new one. We'll call this email number three. And 
And let's just add a delay right here. One day. So with workflows, you can make it as simple as you need to. You could, you know, do some crazy workflows if you want to as well. But um, for the most part, workflows are something that's super easy that you could do. So uh, like this one right here, we could, uh, we just add the contact tag. We notified, did a notification step. We did email number one wait a day, do email number two, wait a day, email number three, wait a day. And what I would recommend doing, if you're still trying to like build out the workflow and you're not like completely set, I would recommend using this pause step right here. So with this pause step, once it finishes the workflow, it's just gonna hold people right here. And then what you could do is, let's say for example, we're like, hey, we wanna add you know, two more emails. So we could do email number four, And then kind of keep doing the same process of like delay, do another email. So if we add that delay, and then we do another email. And number five. And then you could do another pause right here. So this is kind of an example of, hey, we're not quite sure if this workflow is finished. So we added this pause right here. And then with this pause, it's gonna hold it until you manually release it. So until you come back here, you're gonna click on the pause and then click release. That's when it's gonna start continuing on the workflow. So it's gonna send email number four, delay it by one day, send email number five. And then this is another pause as well. So it's like, I'm not totally done with this workflow, so we're just gonna keep adding pauses. Uh, but like I mentioned, you can do some pretty awesome things. So like right here, we have a conditional sp split path. So you could split uh, the people inside your workflow and then you could base it off of certain conditions. So if we click into it, whether it's an email or contact details, tag, uh, created at, uh, first name, last name, you know, contact activity, so there's a lot of cool things that you could do. And then also too, there's that split test. So let me let me just delete this. So you could actually split test. Um, you can actually split test the workflow, which is super cool. And so you could define how much traffic you should get for uh, one side of the split test versus another side. And then make sure you apply changes. And then um, one thing that I wanna show you as well, there was, a trigger another workflow so you could have it so it completes this workflow and then basically you can have it so it creates or it starts triggering another workflow as well and it goes through that process so like i mentioned uh workflows they could be as simple as you need to they could be complex if you're doing a lot of testing and and stuff with your workflow but like for most people probably like a basic email sequence using workflows would be um, just a good start overall. And so um, when you hear workflows, you don't have to be intimidated. They're uh, super easy to create, but just make sure that if you are sending emails to make sure that you get all the email settings all configured so that you could uh, start sending out these emails as part of your workflow. So that's what a workflow is. And we just created our first workflow together. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'd love to help you out.